this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. Nat 20. Oh, oh yes. Baby! Oh. Oh. After fighting through the brewery and getting what they came for. You were at the East of All Brewery still, the deadly East of All Brewery, and you had rested up, you got what you needed from here, and you were about to head out when you were so rudely interrupted. Rudely. Very rudely interrupted by a wimpy ass sounding cactus leshy who uh, called himself Dewey Daystar. The outlaws now have to fight their way past Dewey Daystar and the clear water cleaners. Hold it right there. We know you have the alchemist whose crimes against the natural world are too numerous to quantify. We're associating- How do they know? Shut up with so foul an enemy of all things alive. None of you shall leave here alive. I, Dewey Daystar of the Clear Water Cleaners, will see an end to your toxic ways. Sick em, Roxy. And this little leshy isn't about to let them off easy. And now, this time for a game I like to call Chester's Gonna Die This Turn. Because <laughs> uh, that's all of uh, Chester's actions. Mm, I hate this nerd. It's time for a showdown. <laughs> Derek just took off his headset. He's leaving. <laughs> I think we broke him. Now. know about you guys but i think fall candles smell the best oh totally i recently got a bunch of wax melts candle adjacent and they're like pumpkin they're apple they're cinnamon i think it smells great i love being teased by the concept of there being a dessert in the kitchen but not really as long as it smells good i'm okay with it even though i i end up hungrier than normal it encourages me to bake i also like fall candles you, uh, you forgot that there's also, you can add cranberry into the fall scents. Ah, fair Ooh. enough, fair enough. Christmas is too strong. I, Christmas is too strong. I, Christmas cinnamon. also almost always has like a pine undertone and that smells like a dude's bathroom. Christmas tastes hey, like no. strep throat. I like the way my bathroom also, smells. Also, marshmallow. Sm- smells, smells marshmallows it. belong in fall. Marshmallows yes, do yeah. belong in fall. S'mores. They could also be in cocoa. Oh, I found a list of fall scented but candles. But cocoa is fall as well. It's I not just winter. I think cocoa is fall as well. I associate cocoa more with like Christmas uh, with with like Christmas Snow. Yeah. yeah and I associate cider cider more with fall yeah. oh yeah but people have cider in the winter and cocoa in the fall I had hot chocolate recently I made I made hot chocolate with Drow. really old hot chocolate powder and it was kind of gross I, I found you I a can candle make hot chocolate the percolator probably I don't yeah. want to but I probably could it's called salted butterscotch that sounds nifty yeah I don't know salt smell how does how does something smell salty? Hey, audience, call in. Tell how us how does something smell salty? salty. No, 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 you've been in to. Detail. Have you been to the ocean? You can smell the salt. Duh. Yes. <sighs> yeah. The thing is, I wouldn't say that that's something that would mix well with butterscotch. So something smells salty if you take it and you dunk it in the ocean. What's and that's also like actual just salt getting kicked up into the air it's the smell of anger oh man these are some good smell these sound good oh. pumpkin <laughs> with gen pumpkin ginger candle okay so, yeah wait wait salty is what reddit smells like yes yes no okay. reddit smells like sweat uh well, sweat. I mean, salt. 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 salt salt sweat dick maybe baby baby would beef stew make a good candle smell um, oh new question is so is sugar oh. cookie a fall scent or a Christmas scent? It's Christmas. both. It can be both. Yeah. It's so, ooh, back on the Christmas. back on the beef stew candle beef stew? thing, there were uh, quote unquote manly scented candles being sold a while ago, and I oh. think that like oh. beef stew was one of them. Well, because I asked, I know bacon was because I was making ooh. a. Uh, that sounds a, gross. Beef burgundy. I was making beef burgundy. Beef bourguignon. I'm gonna kill you. And uh, it smelled real good whenever it was uh, stewing up. In my Dutch oven, and that was nice. That's my favorite ship in Mass Effect. The Dutch oven? The beef burgundy. The beef burgundy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if audience Bob can tell, but we're tired today. Yeah. This is the first episode we've sat down to record, and it's 6 p.m. We've been sitting at the table for about two hours. We've been here for two hours. (laughs) 
I've we, gotten a lot of work done while y'all have been sitting really? doing nothing. We have a nice like checklist, like a pre-flight oh. checklist for each episode we record, and we've made our way through each of the points, but it's been slow. Really slow. This is all your fault, too. My fault? This is your fault. Why is this my fault? We're waiting for you to start this. You shut up. You're the leader here. <laughs> you have to rein us I'm in. I'm the you, leader here. You are the cowboy, and we are the time. herd of cats. Yeah, you're right, though. You're right, though. But um, yes, uh, call in with your favorite fall scent. Ooh, Don't yes. Don't give us Tell anything us. that would count as a winter scent, or else I'm going to find you. And you have 30 minutes, or there will be consequences. Yep. I will say I like 30 minutes from recording, actually. From right now. Yeah, right but now. No, fall yeah. scents right now. are the best because Lord forbid you give me anything that is spring scented because it's Ugh. the chemical flower scents. Ugh. And I despise those with a burning passion. Yeah. Spring and summer scents are bad because they often smell like soap. They can they smell like soap. Smell good, but a lot if, of them are a bit too strong. If the I summer think. scents are food related, like some fruits done Watermelon. well, that's fine. But if it's anything floral, it's terrible. So that's why fall scents are the best candles. Doesn't it just smell like water? What does water smell? Watermelon doesn't have much of a flavor. Oh, I found it? a candle for Micah. It's called the whiskey and whiskey <laughs> candle. Hey. The whiskey candle. I don't like uh, Christmas smells too much because every time I experience them, they are massively overdone. Yeah. No, I, and there's, I, mm, I get that. I there's get nothing that. more kind of off-putting to me around Christmas time. I do like Christmas a lot. You go into like a store and it's just overwhelmingly like vanilla and peppermint. Yeah. And it's like chokes you almost well, with it. We did that with fall scents. We went to Food Lion the other day and I walk in and they've got this gigantic display. We're talking like eight foot wide display full of the cinnamon scented pine, pine cones. cones. Mm. And I thought I was going to keel over dead. It was too much. I feel like p fall smells for me are like pizza for me. It's impossible for me to overdo it. Ah, yeah. It is just physically impossible. The fakey cinnamon scent gets me. That's about the only fall scent I don't like. I don't really associate that with... Fall. I oh. think cinnamon more, think to, more, I associate more to Christmas. But yeah. then again, that could also solely be because my mom would make like hard candy at Christmas time. Your and, mom made hard candy? Oh yeah, it was really good too. Uh, but she would make a cinnamon batch that would fill the uh, the house with the smell of cinnamon. So I cannot help but associate that with Christmas. How do you make hard candy? Isn't that just sugar? No, it's, it's it's sugar with flavoring. You can get some dye for color. You you melt it. You pour it into a baking sheet, and then you let it get hard, and you just smash it. Christmas crack. But I, Christmas crack is like actual food with crackers and chocolate whatnot. This is just sugar. This is, okay. It literally is just sugar. Uh, Interesting. But like people really liked her hard candy. So she ended up making a lot of it. So we'd have a lot of it. And the house would smell like cinnamon. Like like nice. nothing but cinnamon for days sometimes. Ooh. I hated it when I was a kid, but now I'd love it. You know what's a good smell that's not a candle? Well, mm. Is um Christmas tree smell. Oh, yes. Yeah, so like true <sighs> Christmas tree. You're, you're, oh, that's the, that's the scent of Christmas for me. I can understand that that is a good smell. Sometimes I'll even enjoy it. But I, I am serious when I say that smells like strep throat to me. Because for like a decade of my life, I would get a little less Buddy. strep throat every Christmas. And we ended up finding out it was because we had a live Christmas tree in our house. It would send my allergies haywire. And that's why every Christmas season I would get strep throat. So every time I smell a Christmas tree, I'm like, ah, I'm going to get strep throat this week. It's mm. going to happen. Here's one for you. And I'm just going to change the topic off of Christmas. You know what the fall thing for me is this year? And I felt personally attacked. Your brother, Jacob, posted this thing about Jacob's how- Jacob's brother, Jacob. The, um, <clears throat> a wife was pi specifically Be picking out fall one. mums to kill. And I felt attacked because <laughs> I bought a thing of mums and they were this beautiful, large thing of orange mums. And in about four days, they I were forgot dead. to water them two days with those four and they died on me. <laughs> I had to look up what orange mums were. You did nothing but attack yourself. And I feel attacked by that. <laughs> You're attacked by yourself. Mums are a symbol of fall, but I can't keep plants alive. And mm -hmm. this time I didn't have COVID as a brain fog thing to blame for the death of my plants. This is why we have alarms on our phones. 
This is that why. would have been a super smart thing to do. <laughs> I'm going to get more mums and set an alarm on my phone that says water mums, you dummy. Listen, Check in next get, week to see if Kat's mums are still alive. You get one more chance. These mums are expensive. <laughs> no, I'm going to get the cheap ones. <laughs> oh, I'm not okay. going to go get the ones that are expensive. You should just name your alarm Dum Dum Water Mum Mum. Yes! <laughs> dum Dum Water Mum Mum. <laughs> So, I did the museum. Oh, that, that was, was a, a really good classically movie. Classically good movie. That was a deep dig right there. I've never seen Ben Stiller in anything. We expand or we die. That's where uh, where Micah's uh, idol comes from. Yeah. His profile picture for many years came from. Go, Angry uh, little cowboy. I and honestly, be, that's where his uh, his, yeah. his nickname on Discord, his funky little cowboy, comes from. Yeah. I'm doxing you, Micah. Manifest destiny. Oh, there's going to be a dodgeball, too. He's alive. Yeah, I know he was alive. Well, he's in stuff. Hey, Ben Stiller, we're looking you up. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank you, Ben Stiller. <laughs> the Museum was a good movie. You're a good actor, oh, just so you movie. know. Great movie. I thought now that you should have died it. in the last uh, Night at the Museum. Died? Yeah. Died? No. People don't die no. in those movies. He should have found out that he was a wax figurine of the same guy, left, and then turned into dust. Okay, that would have been a great way to button it up and no. make it sad. No. Yes. Why would you make it sad? Why would you make like it sad? sad things? This isn't it's, supposed to be a sad thing. It's been too good adventure. for too long. That's right, how I made your feel point. about that. <laughs> <laughs> have fun with the editing of that. I'll leave it in. Don't <laughs> test me. <laughs> Centuries <laughs> before. <laughs> I was waiting for a moment oh, to boy. jump in with that because... I, I I could just sense this banter has already been off the rails because the past two hours have been off the rails. We spent a good fifteen minutes saying sheesh. Oh, for context. I mean, we did that last week too. So <laughs> I have something that I would like to say before we jump in. Uh huh. Anime titties are temporary. Centuries but the joy, before. No, hang on, hang on. But the joy from playing Pathfinder with your friends is also temporary because of scheduling conflicts. You know what's not temporary? Centuries, Centuries before. Centuries before. Boo. The star stood. Shut up. I'll mute you. For three hundred years. The wizard king's next, next and get Gap. warred with one or scarring the land between them into a devastated, unstable, scented candle shopping mall. But now From the mist is gone! the cold ashes of the Mana Wastes arose Alkenstar, the city of smog, a metropolis of airships, skyscrapers, Pumpkin factories, spice lattes. and clockwork wonders. <laughs> I had to stop. You almost got me. To the world, Alkenstar is the pinnacle Alkenstar's of innovation and innovation determination in the face of insurmountable insurmountable odds. odds. On its streets, On its street. life in Alkenstar is a non-stop race, race to stay race ahead to stay of the competition. competition. And, the and it is here and it is that here. is a desperate group. That is a desperate group. You, audience, I try so hard every single week. Audience, and I try this so is what hard happens every to single me. week. And this is what happens to me. Hungry for, Hungry revenge, for revenge, living on the living edge of the, the law. Of the the walls of Alkenstar. <laughs> <laughs> Even I joined into the intro ruining. Derek just took off his headset. He's leaving. I think we broke him. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting episode. <laughs> Honestly, this episode's gonna be perfectly fine. We have a combat. We're gonna fight. It's gonna be easy episode. Easy peasy. Squeeze them lemons, audience. Are you getting a drink? Sweet tea? Okay. I thought you were gonna get like fucking whiskey that, or something. That no, is that's a drink. not a good idea. Oh, yeah. Uh, guys, I remember we have two rules when it comes to apple cider. Uh, mm. Rule number one there are no rules. Rule number two no vodka. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm back now. I have my sweet tea and my water. I don't have to think about getting interrupted while reading my nicely written prompt that guides us into the episode. Listen, audience, if you ever start a podcast, you can get all creative and you do some writing for a little intro. Don't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just play a little ditty and start your thing because as soon as you have repetition, you'll have someone trying to break it's, it every single week. It's kind of funny, because most people really like the, the the thing. It, like, helps focus people, mm -hmm. but I've spoken to someone that it does the exact opposite to. That if they listen to the intro thingy, they lose focus, and, like, don't focus until stuff has already happened. Um, 
And it, it's something about the repetition actually makes them lose focus. I love it. I don't think I've mentioned it on air, but I stole that idea from <laughs> uh, Blades in the Dark. Uh, Jared. Jared Logan. Uh, on Stream of Blood, he, when they were playing Blades in the Dark with, um, uh, I think, uh, Troy the Valley and Joe O'Brien yeah. from Glass Cannon. Um, what was that one called? Uh, it's uh, bl- bl- Blood was and Blades. That the, Blood and blood the and glass. tin whistles. Yeah, tin whistles. But Jared would do this like overwritten intro. Uh, and it's a thing he, he's done a couple different times. But I really like it because it would kind of like signal when the game was starting. Uh, and so I, I, I stole it, except I changed it up for each season. Um, and my players I, like to I rehash would certainly the, hope so. <laughs> rehash the old season's prompts to throw me off of the new one. Are you sure you don't want to use He's Forbidden Lands the prompt this season? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the real question. Are you going to do a new prompt for the next season of 2E? Like for the next book, book? of the Adventure Path? Eh, no. Okay, I didn't think so. I was just it's fine. Yeah. I wrote it to be applicable to all the books. No, do different. Do different. No. Demand just, it. Just do Forbidden Lands. The more I write prompts, the more you have material to throw in my face and throw me off. So you get nothing. But anyway, well, in the last left, you guys, none of you are in fact dead. You are at the Yeast of All Brewery still. The deadly Yeast of All Brewery, known for its famous fight, rest for two hours, fight, rest for two hours, fight, rest for two hours. Find a group of uh, urban explorers. Urban explorers. Um, and you had rested up, you got what you needed from here, and you were about to head out when you were so rudely interrupted. Rudely. Very rudely interrupted by a wimpy ass sounding cactus leshy who uh, called himself Dewey Daystar. Uh, Dewey Daystar had told you to hold it right there in his uh, gruffy yet squeaky voice. Uh, <laughs> I've met more intimidating 12 year olds. Probably, yeah, honestly. Yeah, same here. Uh, he, he asserted, we know you have the alchemist whose crimes against the natural world are too numerous to quantify. We're associating... How do they know? Shut up. What's so foul an enemy of all things alive? None of you shall leave here alive. I, Dewey Daystar of the Clear Water Cleaners, will see an end to your toxic ways. Uh, and he had threatened you and said to his, uh, he patted the back of his drake little, next to him. Little, little drakey boy. And said, sick him, Roxy. That's where we left off. So we're going to pick up this week with uh, doing a little thing called rolling for initiative. Before that, I have a question. What's your question? Uh, I would actually like to ask this of Dewey Daystar. Do you even listen to Drake? What? <laughs> what? That is not Drake. <laughs> uh... All right. Well, the, the, yeah, but the creature next to him, the flavor text described it as a drake. Um, do any of you have nature trained? I'll let you make a free it, nature check. It looks check. like a fucking wyvern. Uh, a free nature check, you say? Yeah. <laughs> um, not to not to do a identify. Um, I like do have nature oh, trained. This and stuff. <laughs> but if you want to know what it is. Oh, I did good. I got an eighteen nature check. All right, eighteen for Alonzo on the nature check. Mm-hmm. Uh, nature is plus one. That's a 14. Instead of that, I'm just going to see if I explode. What'd you get? That is a four. Four? Does that mean you explode? I do explode. Uh, well, we'll deal with that on your turn, I guess. Um, yeah, so Alonzo, uh, you would know that this is a, uh, prairie drake. I actually have artwork for this. This is uh, one of the monsters added in the back matter of this adventure path. Aww. I'm not going to give you any sort of information, like a recall knowledge. Mm-hmm. So, this is just free. He's so uggo. This is like spotting a uh, dog and identifying it as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's like finding a unicorn. Oh, my God. I need to have a scooter in That's PC like here. That's like a unicorn. Well, I mean, we haven't visited a graveyard yet. Don't you dare. We all cope in different ways. Uh, but this is what the uh, prairie drake looks Bruh. like. It's kind of cute. Is it that small? It's not very big. What is it holding in the picture? It's a fucking pug. It's and like it's a, got a tumbleweed. That was a tumbleweed? Okay, I thought it was like a dandelion head or something. All right, so what did you guys get for your initiative scores? Uh, <laughs> Alonzo, let's start with you. Um, your That's perception? Yes, it'll be perception for this one. 26. 26. Natty 19. 
Sick, oh. nasty, psych here. What'd so I get? have a plus five to my perception, which leaves me at a total of six. Uh-oh. Oh, so you got a natural one? Yep. Yikes. Ouchie. Uh, uh, all right, Chester Williams. I got a 27. 27. Sick. Uh, okay. Do you so. know what it's like to be a whole 20 behind the rest of your party? Sucks. This uh, sucks. Called bottom of the round. You should have uh, rolled a 19. I should have <laughs> should have rolled a 19. Should have had a D8. <laughs> All right, top of round one with a 27. We're going to have Chester start the round. Williams, on account of how he starts this round. On account of how he starts this round. Do we have to fight this thing? I mean, they're attacking us. Yeah, he drew his holstered wand. <laughs> Devise a stratagem. I missed. Oh, I would have loved to keep that one, though. He that literally missed sad. his dice tower. Okay, but that's a good roll. Uh, so how does throwing beyond your range work? Uh, beyond your range, you say? Yes. Uh, attack rolls beyond a weapon's range increment take a minus two penalty for each additional multiple of that range increment Okay. Uh, between you and the target. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my final alchemist's fire. Okay. And I'm going to throw it at uh, Jeremy McGee over there. Okay. Uh, that's going to be outside of my range increment by one. It'll take a minus two. Yep. So that's going to be an 18 on the die plus eight is 26 minus two is 24. 24 against his AC? Yes. Mm. Uh, that will hit and you'll do splash damage to his buds because they're all grouped together at the entrance here. That is going to be a D8 plus a D6. Should add a D8. Plus one persistent, one splash to all of his friends. Uh, so to all of his friends. Yes, I didn't happen to critical. Oh, did I, I thought you were talking about what us was friends. The, what was the total? Twenty-four. No, you do not critical. Uh, I, one could hope. All right. So the main, the uh, the uh, the fire damage six. Okay. And then he will and get persistent damage, and his all, everyone around him gets one fire damage. So six total damage to him. Okay. And then everyone around him gets one fire damage. Okay. I I took a gamble. I don't know if they're weak or not, but I hope they are. <laughs> uh, and that is my last alchemist fire. Every turn, he will also take one persistent fire damage. Uh, and make that flat check. And that is Chester's turn. Devise a stratagem, draw on Chuck. Yup. Uh, all right. Does it weak the fire? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it ah. does any particularly large amount of damage to him. Dang it. I wish, but I didn't hope. Cactus John has got it going on. Cactus, Cactus John, John has got it going on. on. He's got spikes and it's kind of bad. Um, it's gonna hurt us all. I'm in danger. Uh, well, that's going to be end of Chester's turn. Uh, next in the order with a 26 is going to be Alonzo 10 Revit. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey, hey. What well, you want to do? Hey, hey, hey. I can't move. Uh, the game is paused. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I go one, two, three, stride up. Uh huh. Try to tumble behind. Okay, so go diagonally across him. Yes, diagonally. Yeah, it's probably not going to do it. That's a two plus eight is ten. Oh, no, that is not yeah, going to no. do it. Didn't think so. Um, but I still have the action to attempt my attack. Yep, yep, yep. And there, he doesn't have any reaction to use on you. Okay, that's a lot better. Uh, 19 to hit. Uh, 19 to hit. Will hit. Not a critical. Nice. But will hit. Didn't think it would critical. I was only a natty 11. Well, then I'll roll. And we'll see what happens. It's only a natty John. <laughs> Seven natty damage John. piercing if it matters. Seven points of piercing damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's All my right. whole turn. And that does get through. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I heard that does get through. Mm. I'm just letting you guys know. All right. Well, that'll be your turn, Alonzo. Uh, next is going to be uh, one of the cleaners here. Uh-oh. Cleaners? I don't see no mops. One of these other lashes uh, with him. Uh, vine lashes, I believe. What do you want to do, my guy? Can they move through other their friendly squares? I guess they technically can, right? Yeah, why wouldn't they? We can move through friendly squares. Uh, then they're going to move around Alonzo. 
Uh oh. And I don't like that. Make an attack here. <gasps> oh, you don't have it yet, though. That's level no. three. Oh. Uh, so one action to move to flank Alonzo. So that means I'm flat-footed to that attack. Yes, which will basically, for the purposes of this attack, it's mean minus two. Minus two to your AC. Uh, let's roll this. I'm just going to use Foundry here. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> yes. Thank you, Foundry. Natural three. Thanks, yeah. Foundry. Um, for all your random number generating needs. May as well just do another attack here. With your lower bonus, penalty. go right ahead. Got to get better than that. Oh, no, nope. you got worse. Natural two. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Way to go. Beautiful. Way to go. Wow, that sucks. Alonzo, are you even trying? Don't taunt them. Next in the order is going to be Roxy, uh, which is the name of this the prairie drake. drake. All right. And Don't you... tell us its name. We'll get attached to it. Yeah, we'll of course. We'll have to kill it. Grr, my name's Daryl. <laughs> Hi, Daryl. Hi, um, Hi Daryl. <laughs> uh, Drake is going to spend two actions. Does it even listen to Drake? To do... What? Yeah, Drake is going to spend two actions to basically rear back and do... you never seen like a cat it's about to vomit? Yeah. Yep. Like oh, a hairball? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it looks God. horrible. Yeah. It goes glug, 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 and then spits this massive like ball of dirt for the size of this little drake up in the air uh, and it explodes over top of Chester Aww. into a shower of rocks and mud. Uh, Ew. I need what you to hell? make it a just, reflex save, Chester. It just threw up rocks on you. That's uh, horrible. 14 plus 8 is 22. 22. All right, you're going to pass. All right. So you'll take half of... Oh, jeez. 10, so five points right. of bludgeoning damage. Ugh. And that area, I don't know if you can see it on the map here, is going to be difficult terrain. Damn. Or, um, no, I don't actually think it is. Never mind. Ha-ha. Ha-ha. It made a big deal about getting showered in rocks and mud, but I don't actually think it changes the ability to move through that terrain. So get you're only going to take five points of damage dirt for at that. You. Get good, you stupid Drake. Uh, it just spits dirt at you. What the fuck? And then... It is going to move oh. in one action over to oh, Alonzo. Actually, you know what? It can move 25 feet. Oh. So let's see here. It's going to schmeh over here to uh, Psykir. Oh, no. And, and Why Chester. Why me? Uh, because all of you are very evil and threatening in the eyes of the Drake. I'm also surrounded by three creatures. Yeah. Uh, Alonzo is fine, taken care of. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, all right, that's its turn. It is now Dewey Daystar's turn. My guy, my dude, he is going to... Does he have a little sheriff's badge? Oh, it's a flower. Yeah, but it looks like a sheriff's badge. It's, it's yeah. a flower that's supposed to be a sheriff's badge, I bet. What He's going to spend a move to step over here. Of oh. course he is. Oh, he going to... He's going to cast a <gasps> spell at a you. A spell? Yes. I guess a spell on you. You gonna do some hocus pocus? Uh huh. I'm so fucking excited. I hope that the second movie is good. <laughs> <laughs> but where in the mana waste? He can't do magic. Yeah, go ahead. Roll. Did, see he, if did shit. he roll to see if he explodes? Uh, he don't play by the same rules. I know. I'm going to eat his corpse and absorb his power. I'm gonna turn him into Napales. Napales? It's the quenchiest. Oh. When you eat the um, the cactus leaves. Uh, he's going to cat. Sorry. Yeah, I was looking at the spell because I haven't had to do a lot of spells in this, you know, Alkenstar Adventure Path. Yeah. Uh, he's going to cast a spell at Chester because you threw a bomb at him. Uh, and he's going to push this powerful blast of pressurized water, like, out uh, at you. Ah, he's using water gun. Uh, and I need you <laughs> to... Oh, I need to make an attack roll against you. Oh, even worse. Uh, even better. I hope you fail. I hope you fail. I hope you fail so bad that you kill yourself. I sincerely hope you fail, please. In the game. Bye, Chester. All right, Bye. Chester. Bye, y'all. Uh, he's going to attack you. This is going to be super effective. 18. That hits. 18 is a regular success. You will take uh, 3d6 bludgeoning damage. Gah. Uh, And you're going to get pushed back five feet. Rude. That is rude. 
Ha! It, it's it's making up for all your shoving. <laughs> yeah, this is payback. Ooh, spicy damage. Uh, that is oh, four, shit. five, and six on three d six, so fifteen six. points of damage. Uh oh. Ale. Uh, and that's his turn. Three actions. He moved and cast. I get pushback. Oops. Yes. Good, good, good. Uh, next in the order is going to be the other cleaner's turn, and he's also going to, uh, or they're also going to attack Alonzo here. And I am flat-footed to these attacks due to their flanking. Indeed. Alrighty. And unfortunately, they don't have a lot of other actions that they can do, so... Ah, sheesh. Cannon fodder. They're going to just uh, first attack. Uh, what did I get? Total of oh. 17. That is exactly my flat-footed AC. Oh, mm, I forgot to use my nimble dodge. Ah, well, you still have it. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's the heftiest attack. You're going to take five points of piercing damage from that. Okay. Um, second attack here. Nimble dodge. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's going to miss. Uh, and then third attack. Why not? Oh, horrible. Total of five. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, okay. Good. So, Perish. Uh, that's their turn. Next in the order, the very last of round one. At long last, we have Psykir, the sanctioned... The observer. The observer. Now, is, who explodes? Is this why you're who the explodes? observer? Because you wait until the last attack? <laughs> <laughs> I know we... Uh, that's fair. That's Z- funny. That's funny. That it suits your name. I know we... You uh, wait. We, we waited, or we went ahead and did your flat check at the beginning of the combat, but uh, now we need to find the uh, results. Let's go. So let's go ahead and do that. Another uh, D20. Yeah, roll me that D20. That is a six... Six, uh, sudden gale, uh, weather and a 40 foot emanation is disturbed. Strong winds blow in random di- in a random direction for one minute. Each creature that starts its turn in the area must succeed a <sighs> fortitude save or fall prone and be pushed 10 feet on a critical failure. Uh, and you must succeed at this save immediately after the surge. Any movement against the wind is difficult terrain or greater while flying. So basically, uh, here I am. Rock me like a hurricane. Psych here just summons a wind. Yeah, the winds from beyond, if you will. <laughs> and, and I, I That's will, a fart joke, audience. Uh-huh. Um, I will ask, does this it happens even though we're indoors? Yeah, that was um, my question. Yes. I mean, yes. I would assume so because magic. Because it's magic. Yeah. That's a 20 foot. You need 40 feet. I'm sorry. I couldn't make it big enough. That's the whole room, I'm not, basically. I'm not strong enough. There I would we like go. to utilize this and make an intimidation check. Uh, well, first, I need you to make me a fortitude save against your own spell DC. Uh, my spell DC is 18. My fortitude save, okay. Hey, okay. Uh, I fail. You fail? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a regular fail? Just a regular fail. All right, so you're going to get pushed. Any direction? Uh, actually, you know what? We roll a D8 here. Yeah, because if the wind is coming from Psyche's area, you don't know what direction Psyche would be pushed. You are correct. Is one the top spot where the Drake is? Uh, it sure. goes clockwise? Yeah. All right. Uh, seven. So you're going to get pushed ten feet. Six, seven. To the left. To the left. To the left. To, to the, the left. left. To no, the left. But the, the ten left. foot push is on a fail. On a uh, critical, critical failure. Right, yeah. So uh, five foot on a, uh, I think. Oh, no, you just fall prone. My bad. Oh. I mis- I, mis- oh. I'm, I mis- swapped up. I thought it was fail and be pushed ten feet. And then prone okay. on critical. You're just prone. Oh, Intimidation great. no longer applicable. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Deception. <laughs> Go. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not what I was going for anyways. Uh, what do you want to do? I'm going to look directly at Dewey Daystar and say, You have angered the natural forces. <laughs> Leave. And I'm going to deceive him. Uh, that is glorious. All right, so I'll let you do this untrained action, uh, which is, would this be, there's a there's an untrained uh, deception action under the skill called create a diversion. Mm-hmm. With a gesture trick or some distracting words, you create a diversion that draws creatures' attention elsewhere. Uh, if you blah, 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 attempt a single deception check and compare it against the perception DCs of those who were, you're trying to divert, uh, creates a diversion for one minute. But that doesn't impose any sort of condition. I'm looking through the deception skill to see if there's anything I can give you here. I want to make them afraid of nature. A fear <laughs> that, they that, so, that they so desperately serve. Yeah, a fear that they're doing the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. 
All right, I'll say uh, you can spend um, one action to try and make a deception check. Okay. Uh, go ahead and do that. 16 plus 8. Ooh, 16 on the die? Yeah. God damn. Yeah. 24? 24. All right, that's a success. Uh, and because you got that success, I'm going to say uh, this is basically in the same vein as using like create a diversion. But uh, because you beat his perception DC, I'll give him the frightened condition for a round or two. Ooh. A round or two? It has to last as long as the wind is going on. Mm. Uh, but frightened, if you're curious, uh, take a status penalty equal to the frightened value on, on all checks and DCs at the end of your turn. Uh, the value decreases by one. So you know what? I'll give him frightened too, so it'll last for two rounds. How's that? Is his AC a DC, or does it not affect that? Uh, Out of curiosity. His AC? I was just curious, yeah. I mean, technically, it's a DC. Well, at least in DCs are something you usually add up. So hip perception DC is... It affects AC. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I see what you're getting at. I see it. All right, well, that'll be the end of round one. No. Oh, yeah, you know you have two more actions. My B. Go for it. I'm what else do you want to do? I'm going to yell at the little Drake. Uh, okay. Haunting him. So I need to make a fortitude save. Mm-hmm. DC 18. DC 18. Well, I rolled the purple dice. It hit my red dice that I normally roll, and I looked at my red dice, and it was an 18. I was like, hell yeah. And I looked and remembered that I rolled yeah, the, purple the purple one. Dice. The purple one is a natural three. Oh, where'd he go? So that's four points of damage. Yep. Okay. Oof. I mean, it didn't happen to critically fail, did it? Uh, your what's your DC? Eighteen. Eighteen. It does not critically oh. fail. Uh, mm. Always ask. Yep. Good call. Uh, and that will be the end of round one. Top of round two. Chester, I need you to make me a fortitude save in this uh, <laughs> gust of wind. Oh yeah. Uh, Chester, gonna make a fortitude save. Williams, on a count on twenty-two. You're good. You make it. All right. The wind's blowing. Wind's, wind's blowing. Wind's howling. Oh, dang it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <A> perfect example. <laughs> I'm always a word or two off. <laughs> Jeez. It always. Uh, <sighs> Chester's going to devise a stratagem. Yeah, you know, as he do. Uh, that is a 17 on the die. Chester is, hmm. He's going to risk it. For? The biscuit? The biscuit. Go for it. I don't know what his AC is, but it's lower now by two. Okay. Oh, these guys are made up. I, oh, I have one bomb left. It's a poison bomb, but I don't know if poison would work against them. You want to spend an action to recall knowledge? No, because then I wouldn't be able to attack because I'd have to draw the item. Uh, and my action would go away. So instead, Chester's going to pull out his flintlock musket and Ooh. fire. There you go. So okay. that is a 17 plus eight for 25. 25? His AC, keep in mind, is too lower. It checks it on for me. Uh-huh. With his AC being lowered, <gasps> it is now 14. Yeah! So you got a critical! A critical hit. Spooky season. He's dancing. <laughs> All right. That is a critical hit. That's what I was hoping for. He kisses he die. Kiss. Kiss. So that is a... Boy. Boy. That is 2d10. Uh, wait, remember, you don't roll two dice. You... Oh, that's right. This is the first edition. I know. I know. So it's 2d10 pl- plus a d6. 2d6. I'm not... The, oh, I have to roll the additional d10 at the end anyway. There yes. we go. So... Roll your base damage for me. Uh, the base damage will be 8 times 2 is 16. 16. And the extra d10 is two more damage, so 18. And you Dang. don't get your uh, nice. D6 on top of that, or you do already I've already done that. So 18? Yes. Okay. 18 damage. Oof. And now, this time for a game I like to call Chester's Gonna Die This Turn. Because <laughs> uh, that's all of uh, Chester's actions. A mm, uh, mm. little game called Chester's Gonna Die. Williams. Mm. Look how high you're going to die. Uh, oh, wait, Derek. Uh, don't forget, on his turn, he takes one more point of damage, and you have um, to make a flat check. Oh, I didn't do that last turn. Yeah. Oh, no, this is this was supposed to happen on his turn, so first you take the one point of fire damage. Yeah. And then you do the flat check. Uh, okay, that's just a d20. Yep. 
Natural 20. Oh, he's not on fire no more. Yay, I'm not burning to death. I live another day, Pa. Uh, I think that you should take disadvantage because of all the wind. The disadvantage no, is a no first help, thing. I think. The wind's blowing so strong. Have you ever seen wind stir a fire? Yes, but like, it's like hard would also put a fire out. Uh, it, it, it could go both ways. Um, but that's his turn. Uh, he made his flat check. Uh, the wind has... I looked up other wind rolls because I was curious if it would affect, like, thrown projectiles. Uh, mm-hmm. And I wasn't going to have it affect that, so it's not going to affect the fire either. I hate this nerd. Uh, <laughs> second on round two is going to be Alonzo Tenrivet, who is flanked by two vine leshies. I'm getting out of there. I'm going to stride one. Ooh, ooh. May I make a suggestion? You could do a tumble behind to move... Uh, across from that one and be up, up against the wall where it couldn't but flank I'm you. I'm kind of more worried about this cactus slash she yeah. than, kill, kill, than the other kill, things. Kill, kill, All right. kill, so kill, I'm going to use kill, one stride kill. to get there. It will. And then I'm going to use my tumble behind. Okay. I want, it, I, it's, uh, I want its AC to be as low as possible for this. Can I That's yell good, to Alonzo that he is afraid and attacking oh. now would be a good option? Listen, his AC is 14. What'd you get? Oh, I'm not... Um, oh, that's the tumble behind. Oh, that's the yeah. tumble behind. Okay. Uh, six, uh, 14. 14 total? Yeah. His uh, reflex is also lower. Like I know. I, it's, it's all accounted for. Unfortunately, that's not still not quite high enough. Okay, so I don't make the tumble behind. Uh, does a 13 hit? Oh, uh, you miss, but only barely... I, I, I started out the combat rolling great, and now I'm back to my fives. Oh, oh no. As and the dice giveth, the dice taketh away. I Roll tried, with confidence. Jacob. I tried. Uh, all right, well, the this clear water cleaner. At least he's busy in melee with me. Maybe that'll Ooh. distract him. Yeah. This uh, this cleaner over here uh, who works with, or came in here with Dewey, this vine leshy. Where do you want to go? So I have a question. Mm-hmm. Does this adventure path give us an option for if what's his face dies? Who? Uh, Gattleby. Oh, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, fortitude save. Fortitude save. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. I, uh, we forgot to do that, Alonzo. You need to do that as well. You oh can't okay. Forget that fortitude save for the thing. Uh, we'll have it if it affects oh, you. Yeah. We'll have it at the end of your turn. But what'd you get? Fifteen. All right, that's a fail. I'm not going to undo your turn because it would be too much it, complicated. I didn't get anything anyway. If, uh, yeah. if, if we want to, what he would have done is he would have stood up, moved, and then attacked. It's fine. And that changes nothing. That doesn't change anything. So, yeah, you're fine. Just stay where you are. Uh, this guy will make a fortitude save. Ooh, 90, 15. That is barely enough. That is Even barely when he's enough. scared? Uh, he, it's not him. It's not. Aww, it's not him. Okay. It's, it's, it's his minions. Um, so they barely make it with an 18 exactly. Um, this one's going to spend two actions to stride over to Psykeer to flank with the Drake. Because uh, they do listen to Drake. Uh, and they're going to attack with their spear. I'm going to switch to rolling on my thing here. That's a I am prone, by the way. 17. Oh, yeah. Um, for a total of 23. Uh. I mean, that does hit. I don't know if prone does anything. I don't think it does anything to your AC, but I'll double check for the attack. Uh, prone, you take a minus two to attack rolls. Uh, and did they make the fortitude sit? They did, yeah. Yeah, they okay. did, yeah. Uh, you get a bonus to your AC from ranged attacks. Oh. Huh. Um, what about a negative? You don't take a negative to your AC. Huh. Well, that's uh, But different. you are, f- oh, excuse me, you are flat-footed. Um that's the minus you get from your AC. Um, that's minus two. Yeah. Minus two. Okay, so that is 14 then? Uh, I got a total of 23. <sighs> that is barely not a critical. Uh, yeah. So you will take... Ooh, max damage. Oh. Eight, eight points of piercing damage. Okay. Ow. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, that is its turn. Uh, it's going to be Roxy's turn. Hmm. Roxy, what do you want to do? Oh, I also need to roll a d6 for you, Roxy, after last turn. Oh, what about the other one? Uh, it hasn't gone yet. Uh, they have different oh, initiatives. Oh, that's right, that's right. Actually, all of these guys go in one bulk, but the order matters. Yeah. So, um, Let's see. 
go flying, Roxy, go flying. Is Roxy walking or flying? <laughs> because oh. if Roxy is flying, isn't that worse? Yeah, that's worse. Uh, I oh think yeah, she needs to. Uh, she, she's on the ground because her oddly enough, her um, land speed is better than her fly speed. Huh. Um, she's a prairie drake. Yeah. <laughs> So she actually has to make that for it to save your right. Wow. Ooh, nanny 19. So I do make the save. Okay. Um, but now I'm going to do a two action activity called whipping wing and I make a wing strike against you. Mm. I got a natural one. So <laughs> oh, Yay! No. nothing happens. Good. Uh, then I'm going to bite with my jaws. Not a high bonus here. Ooh, but I rolled a 19. Mm. Uh, that's going to yeah, be a total of hit. 23. Oh, <sighs> oh. Still just not barely a crit. Okay. Oh my god, max damage again. 12 points of piercing damage. Jeez. Yikes! Uh, all right, that's Roxy's turn. Roxy had a pretty good round, except for not doing her drawn. Mm. Uh, it's Dewey Daystar's turn here. Fortitude. Fortitude save to stay Please up. Please fail. Natural five for a total of 12 right now. Yes! Uh, yeah, so I'm going to fall prone. Which lowers your AC even more. Yeah. And well, also he'll probably have to get up. Spend actions to fix it. Uh, yeah, he's going to spend one action to get up. Uh, he does not like Alonzo because Alonzo has a really big pointy stick. Looks so he, like a weed whacker to me. <laughs> oh. He's going to move over to here, I think. Do you have any one action abilities, my guy? Yes. Yes. He has a one action ability where he can shoot a spine. Uh, he's not going to be able to cast a spell, but he's going to shoot a spine. He's not very great at this. Uh, yeah, 15, Chester. Barely misses. All right, yeah, so that's his turn. He moves. Uh, did I do the correct distance here? Yes, okay. Yeah, he moves away from Alonzo. He shoots a spine at Chester, and he had to stand up. All right, that's that. Uh, it's the other cleaner's turn. Fortitude save for the wind. Uh, fail. <laughs> Critical <laughs> fail? Uh, I think that's a total of 13, so okay, not a critical no. fail. Mm. So prone. Uh, I'll have to spend an action to stand up. And I'll move over to Alonzo. Alonzo. And I'll take a stab. Nimble dodge. Uh, uh, nimble dodge. That's a, what's your total? 21. 21. Uh, I just barely beat it. Uh, I got a natural 17. So that's going to be a total of 23 with the first Dang attack. Mm. A good call on the nimble dodge. Uh, God, I need to not roll this die. I think it's weighted. Natural <laughs> six again. That's the third natural six this die has rolled. Oof. Uh, that's eight points of piercing damage. I'll pick a different one. Watch it roll higher. It's, yeah. it's a D6. <laughs> if it rolls higher than that, then I need to look at my D6s. All right, this combat's spicy. Um, okay, so Psyche here, it's your turn. You're prone. Uh, you don't need to make the save if you're prone, I'm going to say. Uh, but what do you want to do? I will scream at the Drake. Okay. Uh, fortitude save. Cock die. Uh, he makes it, so two points of damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'll stand up. And stand up. Mm-hmm. All right, there's no reactions to trigger here. Um, all right. Next in the order, top of round three is Chester. I need you to make me a save for this all wind effect. All righty. 18 on the die. 18 oh, on the yeah. die. You're good. All right. Uh, of course, same old, same old. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Devise a stratagem. Devise a stratagem. Williams. Oh! All right, come on. The number's hear. low enough that he's concentrating. Mm. What you thinking, my guy? Typical Jacob turn takes half an hour. <laughs> I'm not taking that long. Jeez. You want to rush me, I'll just shoot him and do a damage. <laughs> I'll hit him. I got to figure out what I want to hit him with. It's the problem with having bombs. So many bombs do so many different things. <sighs> I might be able to. Oh, never mind. That would be dumb. I'm going to take a risk. Taking a risk. Taking a risk. What do you want to do? I'm going to throw my blight bomb at it. Okay. What is that? That is, it's a seven on the die for a total of 15. Keep in mind, it's AC is still lowered by one. Yes. Uh, was blight bomb uh, poison damage? Yes. 
yeah, so 15 hits exactly, actually, on his AC. And Blight Let's Bomb. Take poison? Go ahead and roll your damage. All right. All right, so that's five and six, 11 poison damage. Uh, you throw the poison bomb at him between the explosion uh, <laughs> and the poison in this effect, riding his cactus flesh. You kill him. Yes! You take that, you weird little cactus man! <laughs> All righty. Uh, that is like all of my bombs. Ex- well, all of my nice, chunky, damage dealing bombs. Uh, and that's your whole turn, too, right? Yep. Alrighty. That's your turn. Alonzo, it's Take your the turn. Flat check, right? Uh, save, yeah. Fortitude save. Natty 14. Uh, um, yeah, you're good. Yeah, it's a 21. And now I'm going to tumble behind this thing. Or. Well, I wanted to point out to you, you could flank with Psyche here. Yeah, and I have to make a check. Just move oh, and flank the thank you. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Because my brain is still in Pathfinder 1 mode. Yeah, all right, so you're uh, going to move into flank I'm with I'm moving this. into flanking position, but does Psyche count? Because Psyche doesn't use melee weapons. I mean, Psyche typically have, has a dra- dagger drawn. We have said that multiple times. We have said that multiple okay, times. Okay. It's just not brought up because they don't use it. Okay. To flank I'm a foe, you must be on opposite sides of the creature. A line draw, the blah, blah, blah. Additionally, both, most, both you and the ally must be able to act and must be wielding melee weapons or be able to make an unarmed attack. All the conditions are satisfied. Okay. So I'm going yeah. to attack. All right. I was a stride. Now I can have two attacks potentially. Yep. Nat 20. Oh, yes. Baby! baby. Oh. 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 Best attack to do it on, too, because that's a 28. Sheesh. Sheesh. Finally! We're, so, we're horrible I'm people. willing to <laughs> suffer the low rolls to get that nat 20. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, does sneak attack double on a crit? Yes. Yes. All right, so you roll yes, your damage does. and multiply it by two. Fun fact, oh. any die that you roll gets doubled on a crit as far as I'm concerned, except for the extra that happens by the crit. Okay, effect. so here's my question about this. Yes. Um, I have, it is deadly D8. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So this means I roll, do I roll the D8 instead? You roll... Or what is your typical original damage? I normally get a D6 damage? plus four. You roll... This says times two plus one D8 piercing, and I get sneak attack. You roll um, your two D6, one for your weapon damage die, mm-hmm. one for your sneak attack uh-huh. die, and then after you roll that and uh, figure up your damage and double it, then you roll the extra D8. And I get my D8. plus four Adds. from my decks. Yes, that gets... You do, you do your damage, double it, then add the extra D8. That's what Deadly does, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then I still get sneak attack. No, that's with the 2d6 because of sneak attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The sneak right. attack is the extra d6. Oh, yeah. Two sixes. So oh, 12 nice. plus. Plus four before my dex, so that's 16. Times two. Times two is 32. Plus, plus a d8. the d8. Go, go, Can you roll your go, d8? Go, go, oh. go. Three on the D8. Mess it up. Mess it up. Thirty-five damage. Mess it up. Mess it up. Gobble 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 gobble. Mess it up. Mess it up. Do you know how much this hint points this thing had? What is it? What is it? Thirty-five. No, it had. Oh, okay. It had twenty-nine out of thirty-six total hit points. So I would have killed it in one shot. You would have taken it down to one hit point in one shot. Describe your kill if you would like. Oh, Just, um, yes, I would like to describe my kill. The rapier goes straight through its brains. Oh, nice. And out through the edge with gore coming through with it. You got it. Yep. Uh, you stab there you go, the poor here. Drake through the head. <laughs> it throws up a little bit of rock. Blech. Blech. That's good because it actually had its uh, breath attack come up this round. Ha ha. All right, so you uh, moved... Nature. I struck. Damn. I have Damn. one more move. I have one more us. action. Yeah, you still have an action left. Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna move. Just stab like here. It'll be funny. I'm gonna move <laughs> down here so that I'm. Wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah. I can flank with Sakir here again. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Yep, that's my act. That's my turn. Wow, this combat turned around really fast. Yeah, it did. Oh. One stab to the Drake, and it's already uh, flipped around. Um, it's the wind, baby. The winds of change. Winds in the east. You guys better run away. We uh. killed your Drake and your 
weird cactus boss. Your cronies. You're nothing. Your friends are dead. I'll trim you like a shrubbery. Uh, fun fact. Now that both uh, Roxy and Dewey Daystar are no more star, it is now uh, this cleaner close to the door's turn. You will fir- they will first make a fortitude save. <laughs> <laughs> they will fail and fall prone, uh, and th- after which they will stand up and, and run. run. <laughs> yes! Yes! Uh, and they can get, let's see... A decent bit away. One action can get them to the door, and the next one, I think they have to interact with the door technically. Uh, yeah. I mean, did uh, they close it like proper people when they came in? But the front door would close on its own. Uh, would it be blown open? No. No, I'll say the door from the warehouse part where you guys are to the entrance would be blown open, but not the door to the outside. So they start running. That's all you really need to know. Uh, and then the next one starts next to Alonzo. It will make a fortitude save. It will fail. <laughs> it will fall prone. <laughs> and then it will also move. But it uh, only gets two actions. Very far away. Because it has away. to stand up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one. <laughs> and then I can move. 35 feet. I believe <laughs> five more feet after this. Yes. Through the door. <laughs> and I'll still start my turn in the wind next time. Ha, uh, you oh. will. That's its turn. Psykir, it's your turn. Uh, what do you want to do, if anything? Hmm. First, I need to see if I get blown around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do not. Yay. Uh, I'm going to yell one last time. Oh, can you get them in the cone? I can. Yeah. Boy, okay, so fortitude save? Mm-hmm. 95. I'm going to take... Wait, that's a eight. That's a critical fail. That's a critical yes! failure. So you take eight. Oh boy, I'm not dead, but I'm very close to it. Um, ouch, my little wooden ears hurt so very bad. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm, well that's the end of round four. Uh, it's now Chester Williams' turn. Chester's gonna devise a stratagem. Okay. Is your stratagem not devised particularly well? Chester knows that if he shoots, he will miss. Does Chester stay upright? Oh, should I use that or do a different roll for my fortitude save? Lamau. Uh, you've devised a stratagem. Okay, so fortitude save will be a t- natural 20. Uh, Could yeah. use that. Uh, 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 Chester has two actions left. He's just going to... Uh, uh, he'll sheath his weapon. Okay. And walk over to look at the, the cactus man's body. All right. Damn. Uh, okay, so uh, unless anyone wants to do anything, it'll be Alonzo's turn. Are you going to chase the, the last one down? Actually, yes. Okay. No mercy. We're one, across the room two. from him. I'm going to see if I can get there, though. How much movement speed do we have? Uh, you, I think, have 25 per stride, so you'd have to spend two strides, but you could still get there I'm going to spend two strides and attack. All right. Uh, wait, first off, you need to make a fortitude save. Use that. Yeah, I'll use make. the first roll I did. That's a natty 14. I'm good. You're good. To make your attack. Please work. Natty 2. Never mind. Well, at least you didn't fall prone and get whipped around. <laughs> true, true. Uh, all right. First cleaner clears the building after interacting with the door and books it. Gone. Gone. <laughs> get. Go get. Uh, the second one. Oh, second one. Oh, second one. Second one. Feels very shameful, Desu, about stabbing Alonzo so many times. Uh, one action. Oh, wait. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm in the green roll. zone. Roll my oh, fortitude yeah. save. I pat. Nope, I fail. <laughs> I spend an action to stand up from Pone. I go over to the door, uh, and then I interact with it to open it again. <laughs> it's like here, it's your turn. <laughs> I feel like this is a uh, an a altered version of the JoJo scene where they kick the one thing that's I, down. I pass. Oh, he's passed uh, your uh, fortitude? Yeah. Okay. But you guys just keep chasing him like, no, <laughs> you can't get away. Yep. You get away. <laughs> I will get there. Okay. And I will scream. Uh, okay, fortitude save. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Natty 19. So that's going to be a regular success. Okay. What's two. Ha- two, two points of damage? Two mm-hmm. points. Oh, 
Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa, oh. only two hit point prayer. If I could have hit! Hey, you still have a chance. I'm alive. Yeah, you still get. Oh. Oh, yeah, you also get the go before him. Yep, Chester, you gonna do anything this round? Oh, let's stretch this guy's body. Uh, make a fortitude save. Oh. Can I, can I just actively choose to drop prone? Uh, just fun crawl fact. around. Oh, man, I forgot to do this. Oh. Okay, well, this is going to happen. Uh, it's not going to have any mechanical effect on you. you. You go over to search his body, uh, and he explodes. What the fuck? His body just kind of... <laughs> but it's not like a boom explosion, ow, you take damage. Uh. It's like a magic energy explosion. Uh, ow, you take damage. You t Nothing happens to you. That's stupid. Is his body still there? Uh, it is, but it's just kind of like ripped apart. It's goo. It's goo. That was weird. I'm going to dig through his remains to see if he's got anything. <laughs> if I had... Uh, I can tell you about this later, but if, if I had remembered to do that, that may have made these guys running away a little bit more goofy. Um, <laughs> okay, so you're going to start going through his remains. Yeah, Did I you just, make your save? I fall prone. Can I just choose... Oh, I mean... Because okay. like, I could critically fail. Uh, I just actually fail and just fall prone and just start... Wow! <laughs> Get knocked over by the blow. Uh, all right, Alonzo, it's your turn. I make my, I'm, I attempt my save. save. Natty sixteen. Yeah, baby. I'm a stride over. Okay, and you still have two more actions. So if you want to do the whole tumble thing, you can. Um. Not that it will really matter if you hit. <laughs> <laughs> but it would make it flat footed, make it easier to hit. Yeah, that's. I'm gonna use my tumble. Okay. That's a natty 14. Uh, I don't. I doubt that a 22 isn't going to do it. Yeah, you tumble. Okay. So I'll move you to the other side here. <sighs> please hit. Please hit. Please hit. Okay. Natty 16. Oh. That is a 24. Ooh. That's a critical hit. Ah! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you redu with the reduced AC, that's a critical hit. Okay. So, um, critical hit, does that mean I get like it's... Yeah, you do the same thing you did last time. Roll All your, right. Your D6 for your weapon, your D6 for your sneak attack, add your dex and double. All right, so that is 10 damage on that, plus four is 14. Oh, Doubled is 28, uh, plus the deadly. two. Uh, so that's 30 damage. Yeah, he has two hit points left. <laughs> <laughs> I obliterate <laughs> him. Uh, he Love also it. explodes, but not because he's a cactus. But just because got, of how hard I hit him. He got so Fun stabbed. Fact, he actually does oh. explode whenever you damaged? kill him. Do I get damaged? No. Okay. Uh, if you were a plant, you might get healed. Oh, that's unique. That's that is unique. Weird. Uh, he explodes. Don't like that. Uh, and with that, you have decimated, and I mean thoroughly trashed, Dewey Daystar. And his band of nerds. And his band of nerds. Band of nerds. And Chester, uh, for sake of brevity, we'll say the winds start dying down. The uh. farts, you know, they, they give you a, a brief respite. And in the goo of Dewey Daystar as you search through Come his on. stuff. You find goo. Uh, you find a, a small pouch oh. uh, containing some coins. Oh. Okay. But more importantly, <gasps> oh. you find... Uh? <gasps> Come on. I can't take the pressure. I need to know. I can't breathe in, but so much. <laughs> Stop it, you guys. <laughs> You find a small <gasps> note. And as you briefly open it, you see <laughs> you see the you see the scrap of paper reads, "Lovey, Gattleby Ew. suffered a terrible accident. Yours, Dewey." I think Lovey, Lovey, Lovelace, Loveless, not Lovelace. Could Loveless. this be referencing Angelique Loveless? Dang, Is this she fuck a scent? cactus. Is Dewey Daystar sent from? Mugland himself? We'll find out on the next episode. <laughs> are you, are Loveless and <sighs> Mugland fucking? Uh, you solved my Leshy uh, puzzle. We, with incredible violence, decimated the Leshy puzzle. You solved we the got... cactus puzzle by beating it with a sledgehammer. That's right. Beating it with a sledgehammer you mean, and making it shit You mean pants. stabbing it to death with a rapier. Yeah. <laughs> All the I, fails were worth it to crit twice. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. 
If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing us. If you want to see more from us, check out our website, thirdgallon.com, or follow us on Twitter. We are at thirdgallon, that's T-H-I-R-D gallon. You can also tweet at us using the hashtag thirdgallon, and we are on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook with the same handle, at thirdgallon. We also publish a video version of the podcast on YouTube, which you can find on our channel, The Third Gallon. Our theme for this season is Delta Rust, composed by Andy Ellison. Our ambience for this episode was composed by Michael Gelfie, and you can find more of his work on his YouTube channel, Michael Gelfie Studios. And you can support his awesome work at patreon.com slash Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.